أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين We saw in the previous segment how the hadith which is preserved in the collection of Ibn Abi Shayba known as the Musannaf has a solid chain of narrators <clears throat> and therefore to argue against this hadith by trying to impugn the integrity of these narrators is not going to work it so happens that some sunni polemicists try and get out of this bind by rejecting the hadith on the basis that the final person in the chain, namely Aslam, was not or could not have, sorry, could not have been present, was not present or could not have been present and been a witness to the events which he describes <clears throat> in that hadith. I do not think that this is a convincing argument at all. Aslam was the Mawla, the slave of Umar ibn Khattab. Umar ibn Khattab purchased him on the occasion of one of the pilgrimages to Mecca. And even if we are willing to concede that Aslam may not have been physically present as an eyewitness, that does not constitute an argument against him being privy to the facts in as much as he was the slave of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Whatever the case may be, <clears throat> I did indicate that this hadith presented <clears throat> a problem for the Sunni camp and continues indeed to present something of a problem and therefore, a kind of cover-up, an attempt at the manipulation of this report was undertaken by a number of scholars in the ensuing centuries. So recall that Ibn Abi Shayba dies in the year 235. So in the centuries following that, and we had a kind of quotation, a paraphrase from uh, Ibn Abi Asim al-Shaybani in his Kitab al-Mudhakir wal-Tadhkir wal wal-Dhikr. Uh, but uh, the substance of the report is still preserved there, even if it's a paraphrase, meaning uh, namely that Umar ibn Khattab, uh, simply put, did not uh, come to have tea and cakes with Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam, but indeed to threaten her along with Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, and all of those who were supporting the Ahl al-Bayt with grievous consequences if they did not give the bay'ah. So the first witness which I would like to call is that of someone who is known as Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi. Uh, the fuller form of his name with uh, titles and so forth is Al-Hafiz Abu Bakr Ahmed. Ibn Ali, Ibn Thabitin, known as Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi, who was born in 392 of the Hijrah, died in 463. He is a famous traditionist or scholar of Hadith, and he wrote a book which is known as Tariq Baghdad. Its more accurate title is Tariq, Tariq Madinat al-Salam. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because Madinat al-Salam, the city of peace, was one of the actual names of Baghdad. Um... So this is actually not really a history of Baghdad. That's what the title would mean, a history of the city of peace or the history of Baghdad. But it's really an account of the Hadith scholars who were in some way or another associated with it. So it's Ta'arikh Madinat al-Salam wa akhbaru muhaddithiha wa dhikru qa al-ulama min ghayri ahliha wa waridiha. So it's really a kind of history <clears throat> of the Hadith scholars 
and the uh, other ulam kinds of ulama who who lived there or who came there, who passed through there, uh, who were not from there. And this is uh, edited by, again, the same Bashar Awad Ma'roof who edited the Tahdib al-Kamal of al-Mizzi, multi-volume. I have obtained this volume from the internet. That is to say, I have it in a PDF form, but I have the full publication data. It was published by Darul Gharb al-Islami, Beirut, 1422 of the Hijra or 2001. The hadith in question occurs in volume 6, page 75, hadith number 2569. And here, he gives the chain, but uh, it goes back to the same. In other words, he gives his chain all the way back to Muhammad ibn Bish. So I'm not going to read everything before that. And I will put this up on the screen. But he uh, relates it all the way down from him to Muhammad ibn Bishr, then again Ubaidullah ibn Umar, then again Zayd ibn Aslam, then Zayd is quoting his father Aslam. <clears throat> and then it says, Qala Umar ibn al Khattab li Fatimata. So he's only quoting it in part. Ya binta Rasulillahi, and again the wrong salawat, but I will say the right one, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. ما كان أحد من الناس أحب ما كان أحد من الناس أحب إلينا من أبيك وما أحد بعد أبيك أحب إلينا منك. There is no one from amongst the people more beloved to us than your father, and there is no one after him more beloved to us than you. Full stop. Nothing else. Nothing. It just stops there. He's cut it off. And then the funny thing is that Bashar Awad Ma'roof, who is a scholar of Hadith, glosses this. He gives a footnote. It's footnote number three. Footnote number three at the bottom of the page. He says, Atharun Sahihun. In other words, that this is a, um, a uh, uh, rigorously authenticated report أَخْرَجَهُ إِبْنُ أَبِي شَيْبَةَ That Ibn Abi Shayba mentions it in his book, by which, of course, he means the Musannaf, volume 14, page 567. That's, again, an earlier edition. And then he says, وَفِيهِ قِصَّةٌ وَفِيهِ قِصَّةٌ Very strange. وَفِيهِ قِصَّةٌ means, and there's a story behind it, or there's and there's a story there. وَطَبْعًا تَمَّ حَذْفُ الْقِصَّةِ لِتَلْمِيهِ صُورَةَ عُمَرَ بْنُ الْخَطَّابِ And of course, the qissa, the story, the tale in question has been deleted in order to polish the image of Umar ibn al-Khattab. So clearly this presented something of a problem because it impugned the integrity of Mr. Umar ibn al-Khattab. And so... Al-Khatib al-Baghdadi does not quote it in full. Next witness is the very early scholar. Actually, I should have gone maybe in more uh, chronological order and mentioned him first, but uh, I trust that that will not present too much of a problem. And this is the Kitab Fada'il al-Sahaba. Kitabu Fada'il al-Sahaba. The Ahmed ibn Hanbal, the famous Ahmed ibn Hanbal, famous Hadith scholar, who is considered the eponymous founder of the Hanbalite school of law, the Hanbali madhab, lived from 164 to 241 of the Hijra. So he wrote a book on containing Hadiths uh, which have the virtues, the merits of the companions of the Rasul of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is published in two volumes, <clears throat> and it was <clears throat> critically edited and annotated by someone named Wasiullah Muhammad Abbas. It's a very Desi name, Wasiullah Muhammad Abbas. Maybe, may not be, I don't know. May well be a South Asian, Indian, Pakistani, Bengali fellow, I'm not sure. Um, this was done as part of a what looks like a thesis, maybe a PhD or an MA thesis, at the Umm al-Qura University in Mecca, 
And indeed, this is published in Riyadh, the capital, world capital of the Salafi Wahhabis. Uh, in 1403 or 1983, and the hadith in question is on page 364. I should say that it's two volumes, and they both have continuous pagination. Um, so even if you don't know the volume number, if you have the page number, you can find it. So page 364, hadith number 532. And there again, he's got a chain in which Muhammad ibn Bishr is preceded by Muhammad ibn Ibrahim, then Abu Mas'ud, then Muawiyah ibn Amr. And there's some hilarious you know, typos here because the word haddathana, I think it's haddathana, it should be. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's written with a qaf. I don't know what's going on here. And I'll put this on screen, but I'll just do a quick, quick maybe close up here, but we'll put it up on the screen. At any rate, the point is that it's the same chain of narrators going back to Aslam. And he says, لما بوي على أبي بكر بعد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان علي والزبير ابن العوام يدخلان على فاطمة فيشاورانها. Here it's in the dual form. فيشاورانها instead of فيشاورونها. So there could be something going on there, but you know, even then, even now in modern times, people make up, make mistakes in the dual and so forth. It's very possible then as well. Anyhow, فبلغ عمر فدخل على فاطمة فقال. So up to there, it's pretty much the same. Other than that, يشاور Yushawiruna, <laughs> Yushawiran. So the news of this reached Omar. Then he goes goes forth to Fatima. He enters it into her place and he says, Ya bint Rasulillahi ma ahadun min al khalqi ahabu ilayna min abiki wa ma ahadun min al khalqi ba'da abiki ahabu ilayna minki. So again, the same thing is stated there that there is no one from amongst the creation more beloved to me than your father and no one after him more beloved to me than you. And then it says, وَكَلَّمَهَا وَكَلَّمَهَا عَجِيب And then he said some stuff to her. I've highlighted it here. In orange, وَكَلَّمَهَا And then he said some stuff to her. You know, and then he spoke to her, really. So it doesn't tell us anything. It's very, very weird. So the whole thing there has been deleted. And the funny thing is that Mr. Wasiullah, Wasiullah ibn Muhammad Abbas has a footnote here. And um, he says that the Rijal and the Isnad are thiqat. And he has some issues with the people that come before the name of Muhammad ibn Bishr. But the point is that the people who are mentioned in this hadith uh, are, are reliable. And he says that this hadith was authenticated by Ibn Hibban, Ibn Hibban. And uh, anyhow, so the hadith is valid and it's and, and it's um, accurate and so on and so forth. But because of that fact, it has to be edited and it has to say kalamaha. In other words, the uh, incriminating bits have to be censored out. The next witness we call is someone named Ibn Abdul Barr, who is the author of Kitab al Isti'ab, al Isti'ab fi Ma'rifat al Ashab. This is an important biographical dictionary of companions by Ibn Abdul Barr, full form name Abu Umar Yusuf ibn Abdul Barr al Nimmari al Qurtubi. He was from Cordoba, Spain, died in the year 463. Again, this is a multi-volume edition. I have got this as a PDF. Um, the relevant portion is in volume one. This is published by Darul Fikr. Darul Fikr, Beirut, 1427, 1426, uh, or 2006. Whoops. And here also, we have the same sort of thing, same sort of situation. It's the same Isnad. And again, there's this statement of how much he loves Fatima. I'm not going to keep reading that. And then he says, if I hear about this again, or if I hear that these people are gathering, He says, I will definitely do such and such. I will definitely do such and such. Doesn't say what he's going to do, 
So that again has been censored out. And then in the next part, when they come to her and then Fatima says, oh, you know, he said he's going to do such and such. But of course, that's what was there. But of course, that's that's just, you know, some sort of parallelism. So they even deleted the part where she said that she would that he would burn down the house. Um, so it's just replaced by la afalanna wa la afalanna and la yafalanna, and I've highlighted that as well. So even Ibn Abd al Bar in the Isti'ab felt the need to censor this highly damning report. With that, we move into the modern period. So <clears throat> there is someone by the name of Ali Daktur. Dr. Ali Muhammad, Muhammad al-Sallabi. And he has written and authored a work entitled Asma al-Matalib fi Sirati Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Alayhi salam. Shakhsiyyatuhu wa asruhu. So he's written a biography of Ali ibn Abi Talib in two volumes. The relevant portion will be in volume one. He is a contemporary. This is published by Maktabat al-Sahaba in the United Arab Emirates, Al-Emirat Al-Arabiyat Al-Mutahada, Al-Sharqa. Some of you who are listening may know it as a sharja You should know that the correct form is a sharqa because the people of that region, in some words, transform the qaf into a jim. So here, it's also relevant to mention that Dr. Muhammad Muhammad Salabi was the uh, consultant on a um, Ramadan serial, a musalsal as they're called in the Arab world, on Omar ibn al-Khattab. And here, <clears throat> he just jumps straight in, but he mentions that the hadith is, the narrator of the hadith is someone named Aslam al-Adwi, and it's under the heading of um, really how much uh, Omar supposedly loved Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. And so he says, عن Aslam al-Adwi, so he says that this is narrated through Aslam and he puts Al-Adwi with his name because, again, he's the Mawla of Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab is from Banu Adi, so he is Aslam al-Adwi. قَالَ لَمَّا بُوْيَا لِأَبِي بَكْرٍ It's the whole same business. And again, here it says, it, it quotes this declaration of love by, Fatim, by, uh, by Umar for Fatima, and then it says, وَكَلَّمَهَا Again, we are left with وَكَلَّمَهَا And then afterwards, he puts in a footnote. Footnote number four, uh, sorry, this is page 202 of volume one. And then on footnote four, it said أَخْرَجَهُ ibn Abi Shayba in the Musannaf. Volume 14, page 567. وَإِسْنَادُهُ صَحِيحٌ And he says, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Shayba mentions it in the Kitab al-Musannaf and that its isnad is rigorously authenticated. But he's chopped off the hadith. Here, you have an act of brazen censorship. An act of daring manipulation and distortion. And at the same time, he gives the reference to the book, thinking no one is going to go and check. And then afterwards, he says the strangest thing. He says, وَهَذَا هُوَ ثَابِتُ sahih And this is what is correct. وَالَّذِي مَعَ صِحَّةِ سَنَدِهِ يَنْسَجِمُ مَعَ رُوحِ ذَلِكَ الْجِيلِ And that this is in keeping or is in harmony with the spirit of that generation. وَتَزْكِيَةِ اللَّهِ لَهُ And Allah is having purified them. And then he claims وَقَدْ زَادَ الرَّوَافِضِ <clears throat> And that the Rafidah, the Rawafid, the, the Shia in other words, have, have added stuff to this riwayah. وَقَدْ زَادَ الرَّوَافِضَ فِي هَذِهِ الرِّوَايَةِ وَاخْتَلَقُوا إِفْكًا وَبُهْتَانًا وَزُورًا And they have concocted lies, malicious lies, uh, fabrications, and have asserted, he goes on, that, that, uh, that uh, saying that uh, they said that Omar uh, said that if they gathered together in the house that he would burn the house down upon them. And he completely denies that this is true. He says that this part, that these are lies which have been cooked up by the Shia. How is that possible when your own people have quoted this? It's in the Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba, and now the parts which you don't like, 
you're trying to pass off as lies made up by the Shia. And to do that, then you cut the hadith however you like and paste it in the way you want to try and subvert the historical record and to manipulate historical memory by concocting a false memory, a counterfeit narrative in place of what is actually preserved in this exceedingly early Sunni source. Much like this Dr. Ali Muhammad Salabi, we have someone who calls himself a sheikh, Hassan al husseini again a contemporary, and he has authored a book called Mawsu'at al-Hassan wal Hussein. And he was also a consultant on another serial entitled al Hassan wal Hussein alayhim as salam And he did a TV program about these two great imams alayhim as salam in which he read out the entire text of this book. But there's one portion he omits while reading it out on air. And that is the portion where this hadith is quoted. And he again talks about under the heading Muhabbat al Faruq li Ali was Zahra, under the heading of the love of Al Faruq, the title which the Sunnis use for Umar al Khattab, his love for Ali and Al Zahra. And then he mentions the same thing, the same statement in which Umar is declaring his love for Fatima. And then again, he cuts it off right there. He just says, Ya bint Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma ahadun min al khalqi. أحب إلينا من أبيك وما أحد من الخلق بعد أبيك أحب إلينا منك. Full stop. End of story. Close quotation marks. But then again, he gives مصنف بن أبي شيبة, volume fourteen, page five sixty seven. What إسناده صحيح. So he gives the same citation. He says that the إسناد is correct. And again, here he says the same thing. He says, same thing as Salabi said. فهذا هو الثابت الصحيح. And this is that which is established and authentic and that which is in harmony with the spirit of that generation and the purification of God and and their purification by God amazing so again he's chopped it up he's edited it the way he likes he's censored it and then proceeds to give the footnote thinking no one is going to go and check so these are two instances of modern, very recent, in the last few years, in fact, manipulation. I didn't give any further publication detail for this Mawsu'at al-Hasan al Hussein because this was actually published on the web as a PDF. I'm uh, told that there is a hard copy as well, but I haven't been able to obtain it. And the PDF online has no page numbers, so I apologize for that. But that is... <laughs> that blame for that can firmly be laid at the door of Hassan al Husseini. I would just like to conclude um, uh, with uh, one final example of a Sunni scholar trying to get out of the bind of this report in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, but this is maybe a little bit unusual. This is from a source in the Urdu language. And I think that since this video is in English, uh, since English is widely spoken and understood in India and Pakistan, Bangladesh, maybe maybe many South Asian people will be watching and they will be familiar with this. But even so, I think it's an important example. So there is a book in the Urdu language called al Farooq. It's a biography of Umar ibn al-Khattab. It's by the Indian scholar Shibli Nomani, And I will say Indian because at the time there was no Pakistan or Bangladesh, it was just India, albeit under British occupation. <clears throat> and he published this book. Uh, the book was published, excuse me, from something called uh, Darul Musannifin in Azamgarh in what is today Uttar Pradesh in British, so-called British India, it would have been called the United Provinces. Shibli Nomani was born in 1857, died in 1914. Uh, this is on page 76 I don't have a, a year, but there's sort of a standard edition. Um, uh, anyhow, it's on page 76. And he mentions this source from Ibn Abi Shayba. 
the Musannaf, and he also mentions the Tariq of Al-Tabari. So, having mentioned that, then he gives a translation of the uh, portion where Omar actually threatens to burn down the house, and the part just before it. So, for example, he says, Taham agar aapke yahan log is tarah majma karte rahe, to main un logon ko, uh, sorry, to main un logon ki wajay se ghar mein aag lagaunga, laga dunga, excuse me, that I will burn down the house. Okay, if these people keep meeting there, I will burn down the house. Now, the point that I want to make here is what Shibli Nomani says afterwards. He says, Agarche sanad ke etibar se is rivayat par hum apna etibar zahir nahi kar sakte kyunki is rivayat ke ruat ka hal hum ko malum nahi ho saka. So he says that after quoting it, he says, however, I am unable to evaluate the authenticity of the chain of narrators because I've not been able to, you know, to do so. I, I guess he didn't have the sources or what have you. Or he wasn't interested or whatever. He doesn't say. He just says that he's not been able to come to an opinion about the uh, authenticity of the chain of narrators. Then he says, Taham dirayat ke etibar se is ke inkar ki koi waje nahi. He says, however, from the point of view of ilm diraya or from the point of view of the whole substantive content and the context of the event, I cannot discount, I cannot repudiate or reject. I have no reason to reject it, in other words. He says that Hazrat Omar, he's talking about Umar al-Khattab, using the respectful title of Hazrat, and afterwards his name, he adds the Radiallah formula. Ki tundhi or tez mizaji se ye harkat kuch baid nahi. He says that the hot headedness and sharp temper of Umar ibn Khattab, because of that, you know, in view of that hot headedness and sharp temper, such an act is keeping in character with him. So he admits that Omar could indeed have done this. Then he says, Hakikat ye hai ki us nazuk wakt me Hazrat Omar razi Allah wagar wagar ne nihayat tezi aur sar garmi ke saath jo karwaiyan ki unme go baz be e te daliyan paai jati hoon lekin yaad rakhna chahiye ke ke do baar aya ke inhi be e te daliyon ne उठते हुए फितनों को दबा दिया. Very strange. He says the reality or the truth of the matter is that at that uh, crucial moment, had Omar ibn al-Khattab not uh, moved or taken such um, uh, uh, quick action, even though there were some in felicities in the way he acted, then um, the fitna or the chaos was which was uh, uh, going to arise would not have been able to have been put down. And then he says, Banu Hashim ki sazishin agar qaim rahti, to usi waqt jamaat islami ka shiraza bikhar jata. Then he says that because um, um, had the conspiracy, as he calls it, had the conspiracies of the Banu Hashim um, been allowed to continue, then Islamic society would have collapsed or fallen apart or disintegrated. Very strange. So on the one hand, he admits that such an action would completely be in keeping with the character of Umar al-Khattab, but then he justifies the whole thing. And there I think you have a very truthful admission on the part of a Sunni scholar of what the actual position of, of what uh, the actual position of, of many Sunnis. In other words, that they really harbor a kind of a hostility to the Banu Hashim, to the Prophet and his family, and that their 
true devotion really is to Omar ibn al-Khattab. So I think that this is a very uh, honest, albeit, albeit brazen, admission and almost confession of uh, true allegiance on the part of the Sunni scholar Shibli and Omani. And in the next segment, we will look at a uh, an even more damning confession of another figure, none other than Abu Bakr himself.